Hello everyone and welcome first of all to my home office here, second to KubeCon Virtual North America and last but not least to our session today about navigating the app delivery landscape while solving everyday problems that I'll do together with Lee from Alibaba. My name is Alois. I work at Dynatrace where I'm responsible for open source. Okay, so let's get started. This is the session done by the app delivery SIG. As you might know, there are a number of SIGs in the CNCF. The app delivery SIG is dealing with pretty much everything that's required to delivering applications in a cloud native way. You can engage with us in various ways. You can obviously go to the GitHub repository. You can join our bi-weekly meetings, engage with us on Slack or the mailing list, and obviously read more in our chart about what we're doing and where you might want to contribute. So when we look at the CNCF landscape, we see that there is a lot on it. What started out pretty small has really grown super big. Some people find other words for it, but there's like a lot on this landscape right now. And it might be, or it most likely even is, pretty much overwhelming when you're looking at it for the very first time. Also from an application delivery perspective, you might want to figure out which tools am I going to take? How do I use them? And it almost feels like a puzzle, which led to people actually creating a puzzle with the CNCF landscape. It's a 1000 pieces puzzle that you can assemble. And especially for newcomers, it might really feel like this. So from an application delivery perspective, we can obviously scale it down a bit. And if you restrict it to only CNCF project, there's still a number of projects there. We have some in the application definition image build area, some in the continuous integration area, and some in the scheduling and orchestration piece. There's Helm, obviously Kubernetes, the operator framework, Argo, and quite a number of sandbox projects like Captain, Flux, Porter, a number of others, Kudo, and so forth. There's also the CNCF Tech Radar, and in June this year, the end user community of the CNCF did a Tech Radar on continuous delivery, which is a subset, obviously, of application uh, delivery. <laughs> and categorize tools in uh, three different categories. Adopt, which means people are already using it. Trial, they're in the stage of rolling it out, they're experimenting. And assess, meaning that they are looking into it. So I also encourage you to look at the CNCF Tech Radar. What we did within the app delivery SIG, we also created like a reference model to categorize tools by, by what they're doing and also to break down this app delivery space into smaller um, uh, junks. On the top left, you see application definition. So this is pretty much everything you need to define your application and your application model. Then there's application packaging. So once you've defined it, you need to package up all of those components that you need and work with them. Then we have to roll them out and orchestrate them. This is the entire area of lifecycle management, rollout strategies, traffic management, and so forth. And then we have obviously the workload instance healing, scale out, sharding, lifecycle management, and so forth. So this is just another way to look at it. What we have decided uh, in one of the recent SIG meetings is we should showcase how you can use different tools for different um, areas of the application delivery uh, space. And this is how we ended up with Project Potato Head. Potato Head is a very simple cloud native project, probably the simplest cloud native project you can build. It just consists of one single service, but it allows you to explore different delivery tools and how you can use them. And last but not least, it's kind of a funny name for a project. So let's start super, super, super simple. Just with two manifests. The easiest way we can write an application in uh, Kubernetes is to write a manifest file that contains a service and a deployment. And this is exactly what we will look at right now. So in the Potato Head project, you can find this folder called manifest, which contains that manifest that has a namespace, or a service, oops, and the deployment over here. Obviously, the only thing we need to do right now is to apply the manifest. Uh, 
kind of exposing it right now with the load balancer, so that might take a while. So just trying to get the IP while this is created. Taking a bit long, here we go. So here we have it. Now we can switch over and we have version 010 running. Now we would have to get back into this file, we modify it. Oops. And by oops, applying it again, it will update. And we will see version 1.1. So I think this doesn't come really as a surprise to anybody. Just get rid of this one here. Here we go. <sighs> While this is easy and straightforward, it doesn't really provide us with a lot of flexibility, right? And we always have to kind of get into the manifest files, mess around with all the details. This is not what we want to do. So the next step would be to use a Helm template. And Potato Head, the Potato Head project comes with a very, um, elaborate example of a Helm deployment. This is just to showcase what we're trying to do in here and thanks to Matt Farina for providing it. What we're doing here, we're basically replacing the namespace by picking one and the images, um, we also replace in the values file and then in the values file, we specify our Helm namespace here. So that's pretty much what we're doing here. And if we now get back to our example, just move out of this one here. We can see in the charts that for our hello service, we have pretty much everything in there. We have our templates, our charts file, our values file, which we'll need in a second. Oh, this is not what we should put in here. And again, we will be deploying version 1.1. So what we can do right now, we are in the charts directory. We are deploying our, cube, our Helm release called kubecon. Sorry, that's already what we did. We just need to expose the service. Back to the browser. Version 1.0. Now we get back, upgraded to version 1.1. Switching to a Helm upgrade. And again, exposing the service. And now we will see that it's running version 1.1. And as we now no longer need it, we're going to use Helm uninstall to uninstall our release again. 
So not a lot of rocket science here. Um, already great that we only now need to change the values file. But what if we want our changes to be really applied automatically? Right now we always have to run cube control apply or we have to run helm upgrade. So is there an easier way to do this? And luckily there is. Um, we can use a tool called Flux. So Flux is a GitOps operator, which more or less means it takes whatever is in a Git repository and uses what is in this Git repository and applies it for us. Helm, uh, sorry, Flux can do even more for us. It can do the same thing obviously with Helm. It uh, can also point, um, point to a uh, container registry and check for container registry updates um, that we want to use. So what we're doing right now is we will be configuring Flux to do for us what we want it to do. All right, directory Flux. In order to make this work, we have to fetch the Flux deployment because there are a couple of things we want to modify in there. Let's get rid of this one and get into the Flux directory. In the Flux deployment, uh, we obviously tell it the branch, the GitHub user. And we just use the manifest here. We could have used the Helm version as well, but it doesn't really matter. Um, the Git labels to be used and the polling interval which we're putting down to one minute. You might want to keep it usually the way it is. And again, we have configured Flux now. And the only thing we need to do is now that we have our again wait for our IP. Again, we have now this one minute waiting interval. Uh, already getting there. Give it a bit more time. Interestingly, for Flux to work, you also have to provide a deployment key, which I have done already before here, but this is what the GitHub repository uses. And you can see it's using my local fork of this GitHub repository. Ah, wonderful. So in this case, we are pointing it to our hello server. You see it's version and now I'm doing something that I should not be doing, but still for demo purposes, I'm allowed to do it. I'm editing my deployment file here, right in Git, doing it directly. Obviously what you should be doing is not editing this file directly. You should have a PR workflow behind it and you can have uh, point flux there and then handle it that way. Or those as have updated the container image um, to be used here. And we have set our polling interval to one minute. So pretty soon we should see the updated version of um, our deployment here. Okay, just double checking here. Yes, we set it to one dot here to two and give it a bit more time. So you see, this is already pretty convenient because now we only have to commit things to the GitHub repository. And that's also why I see why GitOps is becoming so, so popular. You don't really have to know a lot about it, but here we go. Here we have it updated how the application is, is working, it's just happening, it's just there and um, everything is fine. So just let me quickly fetch my deployment again. Uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, yeah, 
obviously it doesn't work hmm. yeah I'm just getting it and setting the interval to 20 minutes again I don't want to run into any rate limiting and also disabling this one here we don't need it anymore okay so this worked great now let's move on so what do you want to see what happens flux is really great because it's this lean tool that can do all uh, well what it's actually doing and it's working great but what if you want to have a lean array of um, more uh, let's put it that way, let's have a more interactive way of looking at it. And this is where Argo comes in. As you can see, Argo has a very nice UI and it okay, you can also do GitOps with Argo. So this is what we are going to do right now. We call it demo. I'll we'll call it hello server Argo. See, it has this very nice UI, auto create namespace. We're pointing it now to our repository. You can pick the revision you want to take, and we also specify the path Which in our case is again delivery manifest we could do the same and we will do it then in another example also with a helm chart but for the time being this is totally fine Tema space argo here we go and now we say create okay now let's sync it so we see that all of these resources right now are out of sync and now we have this interactive way on how the application gets uh, created service is still under creation but we see all the resources that get created individually and honestly very appealing way as i feel so i hope you like it too let's give it just some time again to create the service Just closing the old one here, moving in here. Oops, picking this one into the browser. And we have version 01.2, which we set before here because we're using the same file as before. Now let's switch it back to 0.10. commit the changes perfect and what we will now see in Argo if we refresh it obviously we can set Argo to automatically refresh it shows that some resources are out of sync allows us to resync it see that for the new version it has created a new service and now when we refresh this one here we see it's back to version 010 very nice thing here is we can simply go in here and also delete the project and all of its depending resources which is pretty neat so that's great um what's next so far we have really worked from like a manifest parameterizing it using uh different GitOps approaches from flux which is very lean to Argo, which has all like this visually appealing things around it. But what we did, we more or less applied everything to the cluster. And we didn't really care whether this was a good idea or it wasn't a good idea. We didn't do any canary releases, blue green releases or anything. This is really where Argo rollout now comes into play. 
with our go rollout we are going to replace our um, deployment with a special CRD called a rollout in our go that looks pretty much like um, the deployment CRD except that it has the strategy part in here where it defines on how the application should be rolled out it again has this visually appealing view and it comes with a nice command line tool here as well so let's switch over here creating a new application calling this hello server service argo automatically create the namespace and again coping or I don't want to type it again oops here we go I come on and now we pick delivery rollout local cluster demo space argo and with helm it finds the values file our version tags and everything in there and now we click again on create and sync Now we're creating five replicas simply well it's uh, kind of more helpful to have five of them especially when we should want to show canary releases okay here we have our service doesn't have a host name yet So not a big surprise, app is working again. What we will now do is we go into the rollout again. This is something you should usually not do directly by editing in line. We'll switch it to version 1.2. And yeah, Argo already comes with a very, very handy command line tool. Here we have our canary release. And now we can say kubectl Argo get rollout. Coping a rollout. Ah, sorry. Must be Argo rollout, obviously. And we make this interact. I can have to specify the namespace, demo space. Argo and we want it interactive here we go so here we see interactively how this deployment is going now we go back to Argo and refresh and sync and we see a new pods gets created and the status has been changed to paused which we can also see over here 
the reason why this one here is uh, passed is something we can easily find in our rollout because the way our rollout is defined that the first wait, uh, the first pause here doesn't have a fixed duration but rather than having a fixed duration it will wait for us to manually promote it so this is what we're doing here now this is cube control our go rollouts Promote. What was the role called again? Like this. Oops. Let me just watch this one here. Uh, Sorry. So then let's get it over here again. Here we go. I'll go roll out promote. Space, demo space, Argo. Yes, perfect. So what we can see here now that the releases are switching over and we can see the same over here as well. Releases are progressing really nicely. Good. We're not going to wait for this to finish here really, but rather delete it. So now there's one more thing to do. Now we have automated quite a lot. We have used world loss strategies. We have shipped uh, different versions. We have switched to GitHub. So what if we want to do this in a multi-stage uh, environment? And this is where Captain comes into play. So what Captain provides, Captain provides a control plane on top of what you have already seen so far that support GitOps that can create stages and can build your entire environment for you. Captain uses a file called a shipyard file. This is what you see over here. So the shipyard file specifies which stages you want and the deployment strategy and how it should be promoted between the stages. Most of this is set here to automatic with one exception uh, for production. So So now we move into the captain directory and just finish. So we can just say init project over here. to tell you what we actually wanted to do, which is create project. So what happened now is, when we switch over to the Captain UI, just refresh, that we have this project created that has exactly these three stages in there. So. As of right now, this isn't really doing a lot. We have to do one more thing over here. 
which is linking it to an upstream Git repository. So Captain fully supports GitOps and what I have handed over here, uh, there should be one more. Here we go. That's the right one. I had an empty Git repo in which we see that Captain has started to create a branch for each stage and is storing its own file like the shipyard file and everything in here as well. So, so far we have created this and also created all the GitOps content out of the box. The next thing we need to do is we need to onboard a service into this project. For onboarding the service, um, you just pass in against your values, which in this case doesn't really need to contain a lot, and your templates for, again for the deployment and the service. That's pretty much everything that you need. And you see that a lot of the chart creation then happens inside of Captain. And this is obviously still ongoing. And now we already see our hello service here, which has been successfully created. If we switch back to Git, reload here, we also see that there have been pushes to the individual uh, stages because now we created all the Helm charts and started to execute them. So also see that there is automatic Istio configuration in here because we're using blue-green deployments. And now it is time to actually onboard. The service, which I think it's a, is, yeah, first deploy service. Uh, sorry. And we are deploying version 1.1. We see that there is a configuration change. So Captain received a new request to deploy something. And also the environment will get updated in a minute. It just takes a while to rewrite all the Helm charts, obviously with the right the values files in this case. and start deploying things. Yes, here we already see that deployment finished. Or we can jump right there. You see it has everything configured out of the box. It's running version 1.1 and even having the stages configured in there. And obviously as part of the environment view, we also see where that service is already right now. And it's currently now propagating through the stages. Captain also comes with an automated test execution and an evaluation of SLIs and SLOs as we haven't specified them right now. For um, our demo purposes, it automatically passes them because there are no tests. We now see this being propagated to uh, our staging uh, environment. And in a second, Oops, it should be in staging available as well. So it's all still deploying. should be done in a second. So the whole idea is that usually you can also onboard SLI SLO files as I mentioned and test files. So you can just 
give it, for example, a chain meter test and it will automatically detect to execute that chain meter test has to be executed as part of a deployment. Hmm, okay. Still waiting for this one here to deploy. Now we're done. Here we go. Same thing here. And now what we can see here is an approval triggered. If you remember, we specified in the shipyard file that for a production deployment, we want to have manual approval. And that's why we get this approval, which we would also see over here. We see that there is one. Think of this like as you have like GitOps in place here. These are obviously two branches. Is that this branch is like one commit behind the other one. And as we're accepting it, we're pushing it through now. So, and the last thing we do is running an init project, deploy service, and we now do 0.1.2. See the new configuration changed. Now things are obviously a bit quicker. And see that the new version has now been deployed in dev already. Here we can see how it's propagating through the individual stages. And well, that's it for Captain. And now I'd like to pass over to Harry. Thank you, Lloyd. It's really awesome demonstration to show off the uh, application delivery ecosystem by using such kind of unified uh, demo application. Okay, so I will continue with uh, Lloyd's talk to uh, fill up with more uh, interesting user cases in the ecosystem. So this is basically about uh, in many cases that you that you actually want to deliver and manage the application by hide by hiding all its details. For example. The first uh, tool you can use is using operator, but this time you will use operator to package your application instead of manage your application. So the reason you can do this is because the operator SDK gives you the way to convert a Helm chart, an existing Helm chart into a CRD and operator. So in that case, you can define CR to run application. And the specification of this customer resource is exactly generated from the values of your Helm template. So this is basically how operator enable you to package any software into a software distribution. So in order to do this, uh, you basically just need to play with the operator SDK to generate the CRD and operator for you. So if you do, for example, like this, the operator SDK will handle everything for you. And then we can actually try to deliver the application by using a customer resource. Let's see uh, the example here. Okay, so this is the customer resource we have now. And uh, this is exactly a, I will say it's a distribution of our software because the user can only configure, for example, the given parameters here. The user cannot change the Helm template because it's now a CRD, right? Okay, so in that case, we can definitely we can definitely apply the CR to our cluster, right? Just like you uh, de deliver your application. Okay, as long as we do this, the Hello service, Hello server operator will actually create an application for us. If you, so if you check the cluster, for, for example, get deploy, because okay, the Hello service is running. So if we check the service, uh, you can see the hollow service already there and uh, it has to be exposed. So if we use mini kubi to say, okay, I want to expose hollow service. Okay. Yeah, now we got the running application right here, right? So this is basically how you uh, package your software uh, into a operator. So you can distribute 
your software by using a CRD to cluster. Okay, so for now we have introduced uh, a bunch of uh, independent tools to solve your problems. But what if I want as a full platform, right? Just like something like Heroku at top of Kubernetes. So I can have pretty awesome user experience, but on Kubernetes, right? So in that case, I will introduce you the Kubevela project, which is very interesting because it's an extensible application platform based on Kubernetes. So essentially, if you are using Kubevela, what you need to define is a very simple YAML file like this, which name is app file, something like Docker Compose. We define application here, and we define the uh, operational configurations like this, route and auto scale, that's all. And then the system will translate this YAML file into open application model, then generate the Kubernetes resources for you, including deployment, service, ingress, controller revision, certificate, Kita scaled object because you define the auto scaler here, rod CRD because you have a rod configured here. That's all. That's, that's the Kubi Villa. You can see here it's essentially upper layer or application centric abstraction on top of Kubernetes. But what's more important is Kubi Villa is highly extensible. It's not, it's not just a simply a abstraction, it's a highly extensible abstraction. For example, if I want to add a new feature uh, like um, Canary rollout in my system, right? which can be provided by Flagger. The only thing I need to do is to install this chat definition, which reference Canaro CRD from Flagger as a capability. That's all you need to do. And after, after you've done this, you can just define the rollout section in AppFell directly after you have installed the chat definition. That's all, that's how you add a new capability, even as complex as rollout into your Kubevela system. So this is the Kubevela project. So what's next? For the potato application, we really want to extend the same application to more uh, complex user cases, including multiple services in one application, including stable workloads, database, like that. And also we want to add more tools and user cases around the um, application um, from the ecosystem, like uh, chaos engineering and other kind of uh, application operation auto automation system. So this is the goal for this same application. And uh, the next step for SIG application delivery is also exciting because we will go to the direction which show you the code instead of white paper. So we're trying to add more real world demonstration to, all, to answer the question that what the project can be used for, as well as a series of techni techni uh, technological blogs uh, about the deep dive into the project, how different companies are using that and so on. And of course we are working on the CNCF Reda which is for application delivery is quite similar to the same safe radar we have today, but for personal application management. Okay, so if you are interested in all of these topics in this um, talk or in this roadmap, feel free to join the meeting to join the community. Uh, we are looking forward to that. Okay, so we hope you have a great journey on the uh, KubiCon. Thank you very much.